Hi there, Lindsay here. Today we're canning pickled beets. As you can probably tell by the thumbnail, I did end up doing a lot more than pickled beets. So I'm gonna put timestamps here on the screen so you can go to a specific recipe if that's what you're looking for. But I ended up doing a honey garlic ferment did some pickled banana peppers, and even did some cowboy candy along with our pickled beets. Now these beets I harvested a few weeks ago and I just haven't had time to get to them, so I'm so thankful for my huge fridge. I've had plenty of room to store them and they haven't gone bad. So I'm just washing these up. They were rather dirty. I mean, they grow in the dirt. So I'm just washing them several times, giving them a good scrub before I get them in boiling water. cooking our beets with the skin on. I tried to put the bigger ones in the bottom and the smaller ones in the top. And we're just gonna do like fork tender. It's about 20 minutes. I added way too much water, but I wanted to make sure I had enough boiling to cover them up. But it's about 20 minutes and we're just gonna boil those, like I said, until they're fork tender. And usually they're easy to peel, um, but these were not. So I just went ahead and get a, got a paring knife and just kind of peeled them that way. That seemed like the simpler way to do it. And I'm also chunking them up. That's how I like mine. You could slice them. Um, you can make them into little ringlets if you want to. You can make them however you want, but I just do little chunks like pickles. For our brine, we're adding two cups of white vinegar, two cups of water, and two cups of sugar to the pot here, and we're gonna give that a good mix and heat it up. I'm also adding honey. I just like the flavor of honey, and I had a little bit of honey left in my jar, so I would say it's about a quarter of a cup. It's not a whole lot. It's really just for flavor, but I do think it gives it a little bit of something extra. Now you could add cinnamon to this, you could add clove to this, you could add those directly into your jars if you wanted to. I just chose to keep it kind of simple. I'm just packing my cut up and peeled beets into jars. I wasn't really sure how many I was going to have, but I ended up having uh, four big quart jars and then one little pint jar of beets. I, I don't remember the poundage before I cut everything up, so I'm sorry about that. But I did heat up my brine and kind of slowly poured it in. And I'm also going to make sure all the bubbles are removed by running a knife down the sides and kind of in the middle just to make sure there's no air bubbles trapped somewhere and then i'm going to top off the brine and we're going to give it about a half of an inch of headspace You can easily make these fridge pickles, just stick a lid on and stick it in the refrigerator and it'll be ready in a couple weeks probably to eat. But I am canning mine. I want to give a couple as gifts because I don't think I'm gonna eat them all. I don't think Jay's gonna like them. Just, I just don't know. I don't think he's gonna like them. So I just heated up my lids in rings. I wiped the top of my jars with a little bit of vinegar and then I'm putting on my hot lids and rings just to finger tight. And these are gonna get water bath canned. They're gonna go in boiling water for about 10 minutes and we gotta make sure that there's gonna be at least an inch over the top of our jars. I let these sit out overnight and seal and do their thing, but aren't they gorgeous? And now I'm just gonna go ahead and get started on some fermented honey garlic. Garlic and honey have anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties, so I'm looking for a little healing in this, but I'm just cutting off the backs and then poking it all uh, just to make little cuts on the garlic because that's what releases the good stuff, the allicin and the gar garlic, which is the, um, you know, all the good stuff. And then I'm covering it with honey and just kind of taking my knife and letting it run down and filling all the gaps so we have a good coverage of honey. And this will sit out on the counter 
for about a month and at first it'll bubble a lot and you'll have to burp it a couple times a day. I even turned it upside down a couple times just to make sure everything stayed covered with honey and then the honey will get super viscous and uh, turn dark and that's when it's ready to go. You can start eating it right away if you want but um, it tastes a lot less garlicky as time goes on and kind of creates like this smooth taste and it's actually good. Now I'm moving on to my pickled banana peppers. I These are not pepperoncinis, they are banana peppers, but I'm canning them like I would, like a spicy-ish pepperoncini for roasts and things like that, sandwiches, etc., salads. But I'm just dry packing these with some cut up and cored banana peppers, Jay processed them for me. And I'm adding a little sliced jalapeno to the top just to make mine spicy. If you don't like them spicy, don't add those. So we're just gonna do that. I ended up with um, three pints of these, I believe. Yes, four, no, four pints. Yay, got more than I thought. Straight to the jar, I'm adding some black peppercorns. I think these are a peppercorn medley. Also some mustard seed, probably a half a teaspoon of each of these and some celery seed as well. I also ended up adding a little bit of crushed red pepper just because I wanted mine to be a little bit spicy and it's really pretty in the jars. I'm throwing on a couple of cloves of garlic into each one and then I'm going to mix up my brine here. My brine is just two cups of white vinegar, a cup of water, one tablespoon of salt, one tablespoon of sugar, and a teaspoon of turmeric. I'm heating that up all together and making sure that my salt and sugar dissolve. I was multitasking in this video, so my beets are just now going down for their 10 minute bath while I finish up my peppers and get them ready to go in afterward. Here's where I just added that red paper pepper flake just before I put on the brine. Doesn't really matter when, I just decided to do it last minute. So I'm just gonna pour my brine in and then make sure there's no air bubbles and kind of get all that brine in and top it off. Once again, we're gonna do a two inch head space here. And that just means the space between the liquid and the lid of, of the jar. <laughs> I try to clean up as I go, but I'm a messy canner, so I've still got beet juice on every surface just about. But I'm cleaning the tops with vinegar, and then I'm gonna put my heated lids and rings on and just do them finger tight, and then they're gonna be ready to water bath for 10 minutes. Once these are done with their spa, they're gonna sit out on the counter. I like to leave them overnight to make sure they get a good seal. Of course, if they don't end up sealing, you can just put them in the refrigerator and eat them. Uh, I've, I haven't really had many that didn't seal, so I think you'll be okay. But look how pretty all of our jars are looking so far. Now that we're done pickling, we're gonna start our cowboy candy. I'm gonna start by making my brine. So I'm mixing up some brown sugar here, two cups of brown sugar. Now, of course, if you buy your brown sugar, this is gonna be one less step. <laughs> but I'm just mixing mine up because I don't like how the brown sugar clumps up, so I just always mix mine. But it's gonna be two cups of brown sugar, two cups of apple cider vinegar, and two cups of white sugar. I know it's a lot of sugar, but this is a fun recipe, not a healthy one, okay? It's gonna be really nice to have during those Christmas months. But we're just gonna bring that to a boil for about five minutes. Now once it's boiling, I'm gonna add in about a half a tablespoon of garlic and maybe a teaspoon of turmeric and a little bit of cayenne. I want it to be spicy, I guess. Uh, it was spicy enough probably just with the jalapeno seeds because I did leave a few in just to make it extra spicy and delicious. And now we're gonna bring that back up to a boil for another five minutes. Now we're 
adding all of our jalapenos. I did core most of these and got out a lot of the seeds, uh, but I also left some in just so it would be spicy. I guess I like punishment. I'm trying to clean up as I go, but these are gonna boil in there for five minutes and then we're gonna jar them up. So we're just gonna spoon all of our jalapenos into our jars and make sure they're nice and full. And again, it's a half inch headspace. But after the jalapenos are in the jars, then we're gonna add in the liquid. I went ahead and simmered mine for another six minutes just to reduce it a little bit and make it more like a syrup. And we're gonna add these to the jars and can them up. I did have some leftover liquid, which I will either use on future batches or it really tastes good in some lemonade, just FYI. Just don't give it to your kids because it, <laughs> it is spicy, or at least mine was. I guess I got really too brave. But I wiped the top of the lids with some vinegar and now I'm adding my heated lids and rings and we're gonna water bath these for 10 minutes, making sure that there's at least an inch of water over our jars. Now once these are done, they're going to come out onto the counter and also sit overnight just to make sure they seal. And you can eat these over some cream cheese or on bread or in drinks. Uh, they're just kind of a fun thing to have, especially for the season. I'm definitely going to take them to our Thanksgiving and Christmas things and have everybody try them. Because I have a plethora of jalapenos this year, which I'm thankful for but it can also sometimes be a little overwhelming. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video and kind of canning in my kitchen with me today. I have many, many more things to can. So if you'd like to see more canning videos, uh, just give me a message down below. I'd love to chat with you in the comments and I will see you in the next one. Bye.